I've decided in all desperation that I need to clean off my countertop and find a new space for my coffee machine and all the coffee and tea accoutrements because it's taking up half of my kitchen counter. I live in a very small 1947 bungalow. It's 950 square feet and I don't have a lot of overflow space. Let me show you the area that I'm dealing with right now. I just wanted to let you know that this kitchen was done over about 10 years ago when my daughter moved in. We did all the cabinetry, redid the cabinetry, made a space for a dishwasher and a microwave, which this home did not have. And we had to have electricity run, more power run into the house. And that is because back in the 40s, people didn't use dishwashers or microwaves. So there wasn't enough electricity and a new electrical box had to be put in as well. So all these appliances are new. Actually, everything is new since we have moved in two years ago. So this is a new microwave. This is a brand new gas oven, a brand new refrigerator, and this new dishwasher. So everything is very updated, the sink and the faucet as well. So nothing is old and everything functions, at least in that way. This is the area I need to clean up. It's just too overflowed with stuff. And I use it every day, but it's also taking up valuable space that I need when I want to prep or do anything else besides just make coffee. All I have is this small counter space here. And it's from end to end, it's filled with things that I use every single day, such as my, you know, my uh, toaster oven, I have bread, I have my cutting boards, my knives. And all of these magazines I've looked at for trying to get some kind of organizational assistance, but a lot of them are made for much larger homes, homes that have space beyond what I realistically have. And so none of the ideas always work as well as it seems when they show it in a picture perfect home in a magazine. This side of my kitchen I use solely for food and this is my entire area that I can store food in. So I don't have room for a lot of overflow or extra items. Plus, I just realized this shelf being the length that it is, it does not have any center bracket. I want to be careful about putting heavy, heavy foodstuffs on there. I keep the heaviest stuff at the bottom, but I am going to see about getting a bracket to fix that uh, area because I can see it's already sloping and bending. And like I said, a lot of these magazines tell you buy extra inserts, buy, you know, rearrange your spice racks, do this, do that. But I don't have any space to do that. Underneath my sink is where I actually keep long baking dishes and lids and my oven gloves and anything that's excessively long. And I have them being held with a, I guess it's a lid holder. I'm not sure what I, what it was labeled as, but I use it for, you know, baking pans, here's a lid, here's another serving dish, my uh, tray for baked goods, and it works really well. But again, I had to become very, you know, uh, ingenious about getting things to fit in places where I could actually access them and that they made sense. This is the other side of my kitchen. Again, it's so small, everything is always everywhere. No matter how hard you try to keep things off the counter, they end up on the counter. I have two little dogs, so this is their dog treat bowl. We have, you know, some overflow stuff that I'm going to use for dinner to get rid of it. I baked something last night, I have yet to put that away. I really don't have any place to store frying pans. I have this one cabinet down here. This is where we keep some cooking oils and Marsala for cooking. And these are my basic, you know, pots and pans and a crock pot. I even had to find an overflow area for my air fryer out in another cabinet that's in my foyer. So this is the cabinet I use for spices. When people say rearrange all your spices and put them in these fancy jars, my answer is just buy the same brand or similar brand or look of the the jar and just leave them in there. I'm not having my spices on display, so they all fit wonderfully here. They all work. I have them on one of these risers that you can buy at many soup, you know, uh, big box stores. Walmart, I'm sure, has them. Bed Bath & Beyond went out of business, so now I don't know where else you can go. 
but I'm sure you can get them online. And again, I don't use the top shelves for anything because I can't access them easily. I don't know anybody who doesn't use the top of their refrigerator for storing something, but obviously we use it for a lot of different things. Our overflow coffee, all our tall cereal boxes, extra dog bones. We've even used it for um, large uh, roasting pans that we put up there in the back. And you know, it's nice. We have a little wine holder above the refrigerator, but it's really very hard to access. When you're dealing with a small kitchen and in an older home, you'll find that you don't have these areas for your garbage. You may not be able to fit them and do an insert underneath the cabinet because you need it like I do for other things besides your garbage can. So here I have at least a fairly nice looking garbage can that has a recycle side and a garbage side that is stainless steel and it matches. But unfortunately, I have to keep my outdoor boots just right here. We always go through the back door. We don't use the front door. I don't really have any place to store my dog's leashes or cleaning brooms and dust mops and umbrellas. So I do make the best use of the space by using one of those um, accordion with the dowels on it. And that works really well, but it's not going to be the neatest thing. And it's probably not something you wanna look at as soon as you walk in the front door or the side door, but the side door, you know, is kept clean and neat and it has a wreath on it. So it serves its purpose for an older home, but we need to find some way to contain maybe the boots and the outdoor shoes or some place to put them. So I'm going to find a boot tray of some kind and um, get that organized as well. So this is my very small dining room. Here I took out some cab, some of the items that I had overflow that was putting a lot of weight on the shelves. Again, I want to find a place to put overflow items, even though I told my husband we cannot have a lot of overflow, we do not have the space anymore. And I'm going to look for a cabinet or some kind of a rolling cabinet, maybe something with doors that I can close and shut off so I can put those items in there and put it in this corner for a coffee bar. At the thrift store, I was able to find this white cabinet, actually. It fits perfectly in this space and it gives me enough height to put something on top of it. It actually has a shelf inside of it and a very tall shelf at the bottom. I probably will need something else so I can make three shelves in there. It just has a poorly done crackle finish paint finish on it. So I'm just going to paint over it, I'm going to change out these knobs, and I think I'm going to be able to use this at least as a tea cart for all my tea supplies. Hi everybody, I'm in my car and I'm on my way to the big box store to get some paint, the doorknobs and an insert for the cabinet that I bought at the thrift store for $6 that I'm going to rework into a coffee tea bar to free up some counter space in my kitchen. So let me get on my way, get the items that I need and get home so I can start working on getting that cabinet finished. I'm getting ready to paint this cabinet, but I just wanted to show you, I bought two new drop holes in gold, so they match the other drop holes on my other cabinets. And then I bought some Glidden Essential Semi-Gloss Brilliant White to use as the paint cover over the crackle finish. I'm going to use a brush and I'm going to sand in between, see how that works. I don't have a small roller and I'm just going to use what I have available in the house right now. One thing I always make sure is I prep the surface that I'm going to work on. So I have a large cardboard box that I opened up. So I have a large work area. I make sure I have stirs for my paint, but before I bring paint home, I always ask the store to shake it since I never know how long it's been on the shelf. And I try to use it within a day or two because I do not want it settling and separating again. And I made sure I have my paint brushes. I have my paint clothes on, so I'm ready to go. I'm just going to take my time and start painting 
from the bottom up. I'm not going to be doing a heavy coat because I'm going to do a couple of light coats and sand in between because I think that would be the optimal way for me to get this crackle cover removed or totally covered. And I want to avoid putting too much on at any one time because then it will start to drip down the sides of the cabinet. So right now it's going on pretty smooth. Let me show you as I get along. I'll keep showing you what it looks like. It turns out the back of the cabinet had never been painted, so I am going to paint that white as well. I'm finishing up the top with the last coat of paint, as you can see. And when I'm done, after two hours of dry time, I will then sand it and do another coat and see how it looks when I'm done. So this is what the cabinet looks like now that I've painted the front and I painted the sides and the top and I did paint the back here. I have a very small area to work in, so I'm trying to be as careful as possible. Uh, and I'm going to again wait about another hour to an hour and a half before I sand it again and then put another coat on. I also decided to tape the inside of the doors so that I could just do the top and front edge of the door so when it opens it looks clean and neat. I don't plan on painting the interior of these shelves. They'll be fine. I'm not going to line them or anything. It's actually easier to keep them clean and to just use them as they are. I'm now on the final coat of paint that I'm going to use on this cabinet. And there are some still imperfections, but that's the way it is. I only paid $6, so I'm not concerned. I did find downstairs in my basement, I had a smooth textured roller. It's a little large for this project, but I'm going to use it for the final coat. So I finished painting the cabinet. It's all prepped and ready to go. Started moving the essentials over into the cabinet. I already moved the coffee machine. So this is what I have left on my countertop. And I am going to be adding some decorative tiles that I bought from the Dollar Tree that I used on the other cabinet in my foyer along with the new uh, gold draw poles and I'm going to rework the inside of the cabinet so that it can handle all the coffee essentials. I started putting the gold decorative tiles on the front of the cabinet. It's working out fine. Um, I have four to be used on each side. Each cabinet door is 32 inches and each tile is eight inches, so it worked out perfectly. So here are the completed doors with the decal tiles I put on the front of them and now I'm just going to put on the draw poles. Thank you. 
So here is the coffee bar all set up in its completion with the coffee maker and all the necessary items I will use immediately. I've also positioned a garbage pail next to the cabinet so that we can throw away all the coffee pods that have been used. Inside I have, again, all my mugs, the grinder, frother, and my French press. I have overflow from my kitchen cabinet for food and I also was able to find a bin that I keep all the pods and extra coffee in. So that has worked out really well. I like the way it looks. It fits in the space perfectly. So let me show you what my kitchen looks like now. I was able to free up this side of the counter. So now all I have is my knives and cutting board, which are directly across from my stove. And on this side, I left my toaster oven, an extra cutting board, and my tea kettle I decided to keep in this side of the kitchen. And above it, I do keep my tea bags, loose tea, honey, and some extra mugs. So that's convenient. They do not take up as much space as the coffee machine did. I also left, obviously, my boots. I have to find a place where I can maybe store them outside in a container that's going to be waterproof. And on top of my refrigerator, I no longer have the dog biscuits or the boxes of coffee because I was able to store the coffee in the, in the cabinet and all my dog supplies are now inside. This cabinet, I keep all my dog food and dog biscuits there now. So a little bit of rearranging was done. And on this side, this counter right next to the stove is now virtually clean, except for a few items that I use daily. So that has worked out really well. And my dining room table is now once again, a dining room table. So my coffee station is now complete. Everything is cleared off on the countertops and I really love the way it looks. It's a real transformation and it's something that I had to learn to do. So now that I live in a smaller home, in a small city, things are done a little bit differently. It's a little more laid back, a little more casual. So this is going to definitely work for the space because I only have one eating area and a very small kitchen. So I hope you like this video. If you do, give it a like, a share, a thumbs up, and a subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.